Hi guys, if you can hear me over the rain in the background. I was doing some work on this Robot Wars shunt uh, last week. When I originally picked this up in a charity shop, it was missing the battery pack, which fits in this slot here. So I converted it to use a LiPo battery. I had a nice small 2S LiPo battery that I could just squeeze in the gap here. And to make it easy to use, I'd removed the plug that was there, which is a Tamiya shape, and converted it just to an ordinary JST plug. Then I had somebody who was interested in this, and they wanted the original socket back in there so they could use their battery pack so I converted it back again I'm now thinking of making up my own battery pack to go in here and fitting it with the original Tamiya type plug now it's quite a narrow gap and it's two sections so my plan And there will be people who don't like this idea. My plan is to use four of these power pods from Poundland. Because they contain a 1S Lyco battery, if I can get it apart. Nice flat shaped lipo battery. It does actually have a bit of sticky on the back of it to hold it in place. Let's see if we can ease that off without damaging the battery. Okay, so there we are. According to the package, a 650 milliamp hour, 3.7 volt lipo battery. And my plan is to parallel two together to go in that section, parallel another two together to go in that section, and then wire them in series so that I've got 2S battery. So two parallel 1S batteries, so that's just a more uh, a, a bigger capacity 1S battery in series so it becomes 2S. Now, just to make people really pleased, I've no intention of putting a battery management circuit on it at all. So it will be uh, liable to overcharge and over discharge. I'll rely on my charger to make sure that we only charge it at the right rate. As for discharge, I'm just going to have to keep a Keep an eye on it. I could use one of those LiPo alarms. Um, what I will do is I'll put a um, balance lead on there so that we can actually charge it properly. So that's the plan. Four of them. Two lots of two in parallel. And then series to give us the two S. couple of points to make. These come ready charged so don't go chopping wires uh, without thinking about it first or you'll short them out. Um, I'm not entirely sure whether my favourite soldering iron here which is only a 18 watt is up to the job of these rather large wires that are on this ready-made tail. So I might have to upgrade what I'm doing. We'll see as we go along. So what I want to do, so what he said, is put two of these together, parallel them up, and then 
the next two there. So we've got a bit of flexible cable between them. So they go into those slots in the um, shunt, as it's called. Then we need a balance lead, which will be negative at one end, blue one in the middle, and positive at the other end. I think that's the right way round. That would be logical. That's just an extension balance lead that I've got, so I'll just chop that off. Yeah, we'll see. Oh, another thing I haven't got is any of this electrical tape, which is annoying. I meant to order some. Cut that so we've still got a bit of a tail left. I should be able to solder onto that tail. Oh, that's annoying. That one's come off anyway. Okay, might have to take a risk, see if we can solder on there quickly without too much heat getting into it. Yeah. I'll put links in the video description to bigclive.com's teardown on these where he tells you what all the different bits do. And there'll be a link to my previous video where I just modified one of these. With a proper charger and um, over, over discharge unit. So that's just a simple 1S LiPo battery. But I can plug a USB lead into there to charge it up. And it's also got the over discharge protection in it. So we don't get confused. Thinking about this, I could leave that one on there to solder on to that one, couldn't I? Didn't think that through, did I? I could have avoided 
quite a bit of cutting and soldering. Yes, didn't think that through. Could have avoided any work directly on there just by joining the bits of wire together. <laughs> oh well. Right, a bit of a jumping continuity there. What I've done is put some nice yellow duct tape to put the pairs of batteries together. Then from the positive of these two, I've stripped the wires, twisted them together. Negative of these two, I've stripped the wires and twisted them together. I've got my balance lead here. The black lead I've got wrapped around the black lead of the uh, Tamiya connector. So now I'm going to solder that across there. So that will be our negative side of our 2S battery. I'm just not sure if I've got enough power to get this nicely hot. It's looking good. We are all joined together there now. And if we can see that, we've bridged across there and we've got our balance lead. So in the midpoint, we want to join that one, that one, and those two. So do we want to put a bit of uh, shrink wrap over it. Shrink wrap. Heat shrink tubing. I haven't even stripped those wires off yet, so I shouldn't have any problems with accidentally shorting anything out. Just realised I didn't think to shorten that black one, so they all made they were all equal length. Never mind, it'll still work.
Right. In fact, are they going to be about that close together? So this one really only needs to be I'll do them that way round, give us a bit more flexibility. Except uh, mm, that might work. Might have to finish it off with a little bit of hot glue or something just to So that should be our 2S battery. Oh, I might even put another bit of tape around there. Yeah, that'll, that'll hold it nicely. Well, it's up together. But we do have a bit of a problem. Those of you familiar with these Tamiya connectors may know. Yeah. Well, I gave you a few seconds to think about it. What's the problem? The problem is, although it looks like a standard Tamiya connector, that's the end that's usually attached to your equipment. 
ESC or whatever. And that's the end that normally goes on your battery. So for some reason they appear to have used it the opposite way around. So that means that that's the bit that go into my charger normally, but that's the wrong way around. We need this bit. So I have to make up a double-ended lead so we can change the gender. So I've just wired these up. I haven't soldered them yet. Again, this is pretty thick wire, so oh, we just have to see. Only needs to get a little bit on there just to stop it slipping back out again. I may well even have crimped them tightly enough anyway. Just goes to show a simple little job, just gets more complicated. I had to doubt myself because I thought I, I don't know if you remember at the beginning of the conversation or the video, I was saying I'd already changed out the existing socket so I could put a LiPo battery on there with a normal JST connector on it. So I had to go back and study the original video to make sure that I hadn't made a mistake and put the wrong sort of connector back into shunt. But I've checked the original video, and the original video shows this. This is the connector that's actually in shunt. And this is the connector that will go from the battery into it. So I'm a little confused, but that appears to be the way it is. So we should be okay now if I use my adapter. So positive goes to the square side Get these in together positive square positive square double check yep we're in there and now on this side positive square so there we go a gender changer Right, so, here's our battery, specially built for shunt, with an adapter on it. There's a LiPo alarm, negative at that end, 1S, 2S, okay. So that's telling us we've already got fully charged, or 8.03 for the 2S, 4.02 in one side, 4.01, 4.02. So that's measuring that one, that one, and both together. So I could charge it although it already seems to be well charged, so I think I might just put it straight in shunt and see if it works. And just a quick reminder or summary for those of you who haven't actually watched the series I've done on this. Shunt is not very well, in fact it's very poorly. Uh, three of the gears in there, the main gears that are on the motors, are um, 
well, they were all split. I managed to find two replacements that more or less work. And the third one, which I couldn't replace, I just super glued back together. So sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It would have been nice if we could have actually got the lipo alarm in there, but it's not going to be enough room for that. So let's see how we're going to do this. That's going to go in there. That's going to go in. Bit of a tight fit. Can we do this? Yeah. the power on. Off. Okay. Battery in. Battery in. We've been a little bit generous with the wires. So we have to find a way of tucking that out of the way. Generous, haven't I? Okay, if we were doing this again, we wouldn't be quite so generous with the wires. Screwdriver. Come on. Over there. So, our specialist shunt 2S LiPo battery is in place. Yeah, well there we go, so we've got a specially built battery inside shunt. It's very impractical, I and mean, I'd love to give this to my grandson, well I will give it to him, but it's one of those things that's going to have to stay at Grandad's house, because he won't be able to charge the battery, and I'll want to remove it in between uses anyway, so that it doesn't um, over discharge for any reason. I suppose the only other thing we can do at the moment is just connect it up to the charger and demonstrate charging it.
So just to check that we can charge it, <laughs> got my Turnergy charger here, uh, currently set for 3S, but we'll change that in a second. From there, we've got a normal uh, XT60 charger lead, which I've then put an adapter on it to go from XT60 to Tamiya, and then we've got our gender changer to change our Tamiya to the right gender for the battery that we've just made. So square to square, yep, that goes in that way around, and then our balance lead goes in there. Okay, so we want to What's it? 650 milliamp hours. Well, let's take it very gently. I'll put it right down to 6 milliamps there. Obviously, each one's 650 milliamp hours, but I'm not going to try and calculate in my head parallel and series. Uh, then we want. 2S, can we see that? Yeah. So start, battery check. Okay, it's seen it as a 2S. Got 8.15 volts in it, and 4.08 in both batteries, according to this at the moment. I say both batteries, we have to count each parallel pair as a single battery. So we're charging. Far too complicated for a simple toy, but that'll do. Job done. Hey, thanks for watching. There's plenty of videos on my main channel with more added daily, so don't forget to subscribe and enable the notifications to keep you up to date with my new releases. You can help keep my channel running by donating a dollar on Patreon to buy me coffee. You can always find more information in the video description. Thanks again for watching.